Welcome to the Style and Vibes podcast with me, Michaela. I'll be giving you the inside scoop on music, fashion, culture, and more from Caribbean celebrities and tastemakers across the globe, pushing our culture with authenticity and, of course, style and vibes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Style and Vibes podcast with yours truly. If you are new here, welcome to the family. If you are returning, welcome back, family. Today, we have a special guest. I know I say that all my guests are special. All my guests are special, okay? They are because they are here with us, and (laughs) that's all I see, you know? Um, But it's our first gospel artist. We have not had any gospel artists on the podcast, and we focus on everything Caribbean. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Style and Vibes podcast with yours truly, Michaela. I hope you are doing well. If you are new to the family, welcome to the family, as I like to say. If you are returning, welcome back, family. So today is another solo episode with me, and I thought this would be a good one to do solo because Apple just released their 100 best albums of all time list. And so, you know, with any list, it's always kind controversial, but I'm going to share why I'm not mad at it and kind of like what lists and things like this really do for um, artists and for the conversation. Um, So let's jump right in. I don't know if by the time you have seen this, I'll link to the list um, of the songs in the show notes, but of course they're always controversial. I think, you know, art is really subjective and um, when a collective people really view it in a appreciation stance, and there are a good number of people who appreciate it in the same way, that's what really creates the value behind any kind of artwork, whether it be music or visual arts, anything like that. Um, and then there's this strong foundational set of musical principles that are probably applied in which people are used to. So that also kind of plays a factor. Um, but I really do think that these lists are fun. I think at one point I was, you kind of look at these lists and awards as like the golden standard, but what lists like these really do because they are subjective is they really get people talking. They get people to one, re-listen, revisit, you know, or listen to songs that they haven't heard or discover artists that they haven't heard. Um, It definitely drives engagement and conversation. So I'm sure this is not going to be the only podcast episode. People are already commenting on the list on social media um, and really kind of sharing their thoughts and opinions of who's not on the list, who's missing, that sort of thing. So I think it's good for music in general. Uh, but also, I do think as as people who critique music, self included, we you know share our thoughts. There is also this personal connection outside of the foundational basics that we have aligned to understanding music and loving music. We also have um, our affinities that kind of also show show true. So it really depends on who you ask to do lists like these and the results that you're gonna get. So overall, I don't think it's a bad list. Like if you look at the list holistically, I think it has a lot of really good albums. And for me, I think what makes a really good album is that you want to listen from beginning to end. You find yourself going back to it over and over and you're not the only one. There are moments and things um, that you think are super relevant as to the way the artist delivered it. It sounds good whether you listen are listening to it the first time or you're listening to it five to 10 years later, 20 years later. There are things that are just really timeless about a, a body of work um, that I think is important. So overall, I don't think it's really a bad, bad list. It has a mix of genres, of a great mix of um, different artists. Some I have not listened to those albums. Um, so I think for even for me, I want to go back and kind of listen to especially things that are I, I haven't actually heard at all, like a lot of the rock albums and um, you know, some of the the more alternative bluesy albums that I haven't heard in its entirety, or I've heard songs, but I haven't heard the work and the body in its entirety. 
overall, I did think that when I saw this list, I was going to be like thinking that there were going to be more white artists on there. I think they did a really good job of capturing, you know, the breadth of different artists from a diversity standpoint. Um, but I also do think that even though these bodies of work definitely feel timeless, I would say it really is in the realm of like late 80s, 90s, heavy, early 2000s, and sprinkled in with some classics from, from other eras. Um, so you'll have Marvin Gaye and Aretha Franklin, but then there is a lot from like the 90s and 2000s to kind of make up the bulk, late 80s, 90s, 2000s really make up the bulk of the list. So when you say of all time, I think that makes, that gives it that pressure because, you know, so much music has released that even music critics haven't heard everything. So that kind of makes, um, that's something that I kind of want to point out. And then, you know, of course, as as the Caribbean person, I got to look for who is on the list from our genres. None other than Bob Marley, which is no surprise. Exodus album is on there. Um, I do think that we had to have at least one, and I knew it was going to be Bob Marley, but could have there could there have been others that would have gotten on the list or I think would be a reasonable um suggestion. And you don't know if they if 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 it if it was thrown out there and you just don't know. Um, but I'm not surprised that you know Bob Marley is the one representing the region for the Wolawi. Um, and Exodus is the album, especially coming off, off of, you know, um, his movie release. And that was part of the movie as well. So it's very front of mind for a lot of people, especially people who listen to music. I think there were a few surprises of who outside of our genre, I'll, I'll get back to, to our genre in a second. Um, but I, I was definitely surprised to not see Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Celine Dion. Like I was just floored that, 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 that was my only like surprising, um, moment in terms of the list itself. Like I'm very surprised that none of those three, they're like the trifecta of voices and they all have really good bodies of work from an album perspective. So I'm really, really surprised that they didn't make it. I didn't see Justin Timberlake on there. I didn't see Britney Spears on there. Um, even like NSYNC or Backstreet Boys, I would think that, you know, one pop-ish record like that would make its way. There's definitely some other pop pop albums um, that are on there. Madonna's Like a Prayer is on there. Um, and then, of course, you know, you know, they weren't going to leave out um, Michael Jackson and Prince. Michael Jackson actually has a number two um, with Thriller, but Prince has two albums. He has Purple Rain and Sign of the Times. Um, also, Beyonce has two albums, Lemonade and Beyonce, which I didn't I wasn't expecting. I was definitely surprised to see Solange on the list. I do love her album. I don't know that I would have put it on this particular list, um, but I think those really stood out to me in terms of people who weren't, or or like options that I think kind of like a little questionable. I think two albums for one artist, that's definitely, I think, a little tough to swallow because no other artist has that. Um, Beyonce and Prince are the only two to have that. Um, so I, I think it should have been limited to one. Um, I do think, yes, I do think it should have been limited to one. I was really surprised to see like um, uh, Missy Elliott is on there with Super Duper Fly, but that was a really good album. So um, I expect that. Really glad to see D'Angelo's Voodoo album on there. Usher's Confessions is on. It's on pretty high. I thought it would be a little bit lower given it higher, higher meaning. It, it was like in the second half of it was like, I think in the eighties or nineties. Um, but I would have thought it would have been a little bit earlier, but I mean, that that's also subjective, right? So I think being able to move the numbers along with swapping out a few, um, is what would have made this list, you know, even better. 
Um, you're missing people like Earth, Wind, and Fire. Like I, I just think that you know you could do these lists and 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 talk about them all day. You could do these lists and kind of really talk about them all day. But that is again, this is the point I think of the list is to really um, get the conversations going. Um, I wasn't mad at Lauren Hill's miseducation of Lauren Hill being number one. Um, it's her the classic album that she has. And while she did some work, and she did, you know, two albums, I believe, with the Fugees. She has also a live album after the Miss Education album. Um, but this really stands out to me as a classic album. Again, I'm born of a certain era, so that, you know, really resonates with me um, in terms of just the content, the delivery. It's often an album I definitely go back and listen to in its entirety. A lot of the albums are that are on this list, so that I think is probably part of the criteria. So I'm not I'm not mad at the number one. And I think anyone can really argue the number one, the num the top 10. Um, like I think Lemonade, Lemonade, Beyonce's Lemonade is at number 10. I didn't particularly like Lemonade, but a lot of people do. So um it makes sense that, you know, it, it's it's in the conversation. So again, these lists get us debating, they get us talking. And one of the things that I was inspired by in this list from a Caribbean music standpoint, particularly reggae, dancehall, because that's, you know, my thing. Um, do we have a hundred albums that we could put on a list to say that these are the classics? I don't know. I don't know. I think we have a hundred rhythms. I don't know if we have a hundred classic albums. And I say that because we are a very singles-driven market. Um, there are very few albums that you listen to in its entirety over and over and over again. I think now, uh, and it, it's not that they're not being released. Um, I just think that we, particularly in dance hall, it's, it's definitely much more challenging to kind of find that full body of work. I think we have a few. Um, but I can't say that we would fill it out. I think reggae, definitely, we have a good amount of albums um, that I, I think would make a great list like this. Um, if you think about Bujas Till Shiloh, or I was I was actually going to, well, not really surprised that Sean Paul's That's You Rock is not um, on this list, given his popularity. But um, that's an album that I think has longevity. Um, and like now I'm blanking, but I, I think it would be good to kind of like revisit and go through like a uh, entire catalog. Like what would that look like of a hundred albums of reggae and or dance hall? What, what would that look like? What would a list like this really look like to really talk about the catalog of music that we really have? And then when you talk about the rhythm conversation, I feel like the rhythms, that would be a, a, a really, really fun list to do with like a bunch of different, even like the hundred album list. Like if we did that, what would that look like for our, our music genre? So I am putting it out there to see like, maybe we should do it and see how that looks. But of course these lists, you know, people be all in their feelings about these lists. So um, maybe it's something that we can revisit. Maybe it's something that someone else will do. I don't know, uh, but definitely get the conversation, but get the conversation going. I also think it's an opportunity for us to really look at ca catalog and bodies of work um, from artists. So um, I think that that is important as well to kind of continue to drive the genre. I wasn't surprised that Bob Marley was on this list, um, but it, I think we have the opportunity to have some other representation when it comes to lists like these. Um, that's just my perspective. Um, I would love to hear what you think. Again, you guys can text me what your thoughts are. If you are watching a clip of this on social, you can comment and let me know. Um, I appreciate your support. But what did you think of Apple's 100 best albums of all time list? Have you seen the list? What would you add? What would you remove? 
What would you, what are you surprised by? Share your thoughts with me. And until next time, later my peeps. Thanks for listening to the latest episode of the Style and Vibes podcast. If you like what you hear, and I know you do, share it with your friends and family. If you want more, make sure you visit styleandvibes.com and follow us on our social channels, Twitter and Instagram at Style and Vibes. Until next time, Leah Tommy peeps.